Hi, and welcome to today's webinar, I'm Deploying an Ideal SDN Fabric for VMware SDDC. My name is Judy Ash, and I'm the head of corporate marketing here at Big Switch, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Joining me is Angelique Medina, our senior product marketing manager, and JP Shukla, director of product management. As we go through the presentation today, please feel free to ask us questions using the Q&A box on your webinar dashboard. If you're watching this video on demand and you have a question, email us at info at bigswitch.com. And of course, if you have questions on an upcoming webinar topic or our products or solutions or partners, you can email us at info at bigswitch.com and one of our SDN experts will get back to you immediately. We've provided you with handouts for today's session. Those are easy to download via the handouts tab on your dashboard. We have a very full agenda for today's webinar. We're excited that you have joined us. Let me hand this off to Angelique. Thanks, Judy. So before we get started today, I wanted to take a step back and just provide a bit of context for those of you who may not be familiar with Big Switch. Big Switch Networks is a next generation networking company. Our mission is to redefine how networks are built, secured, and monitored. And what we mean by this is that we're effectively disrupting the status quo of traditional networking. We do this using modern approaches like hardware software disaggregation and software-defined networking. So the focus of uh, the webinar today is our data center switching solution, Big Cloud Fabric, and how it specifically is designed to integrate into and support VMware software-defined data center solutions. We're going to dig into this a little bit more and talk about the advantages of deploying Big Cloud Fabric as the network underlay for VMware SDDC. Uh, so let's get started. Just a, a quick uh, note on the agenda. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to provide a brief overview of Big Cloud Fabric, Fabric, and then we're going to cover some of the specific integrations we have with VMware solutions and focusing uh, in particular on vSphere, NSX, and vSAN. So if we look at the data center today, I mean, we see that, there, that it's really undergoing rapid changes as, as it adopts new technologies and practices to enable uh, an increase in operational efficiency and optimization in IT spend and the support for cloud native app applications and, and microservices. Um, it's also, it's adopting these technologies really to enable the business to perform better and innovate faster. Now compute and storage have already undergone abstraction, and that's enabled more efficient uh, and, of course, uh, more flexible resource utilization, uh, as well as the agility needed in the DC to support cloud-native apps. Many organizations deploy VMware for virtual compute and are now also moving towards software-defined storage, like VMware's vSAN and hyperconverged infrastructure. They may also use a network overlay, such as NSX, to provide a, a logical network construct for easy networking for VM admins. All of these changes in the data center have increased uh, pressure, really, on the physical network, which, despite innovations on the compute and storage side, really hasn't changed all that much in 20 years. So regardless of all the, the changes towards a more agile infrastructure in the data center, really the agility of the data center still depends on the physical routing and switching uh, which is still complex and, and, and quite slow. Traditional networking uh, is based on a, a legacy three-tier box-by-box architecture that, that was really designed for north-south traffic flow. These architectures, they're complex, they're brittle. Um, each switch within the network has to be consistently configured to prevent any one of them from creating routing errors. So provisioning the network for applications and other standard operations like troubleshooting are, are manual and time consuming. Gardner refers to this as the, the status quo or, or basically humans as middleware performing repetitive manual operations. And automation I mean, is certainly available for legacy networking. For instance, you might have scripting workflows or configuration templates that can be applied to the switches to improve efficiency. Um, but ultimately, this is just a workaround to the problem uh, of having to deal with configuring and managing large numbers of autonomous switches in a traditional network environment. Legacy networks also rely on proprietary hardware software integrated switches, which can be expensive and, and also reduce uh, the flexibility uh, of the data center. 
the takeaway here is that traditional networking can't support the, the new demands on today's data centers, which are adopting new technologies and experiencing higher volumes of east-west traffic. Again, with both server and storage components having undergone innovation, the, the networking layer has become the bottleneck, really, for, for data center innovation, uh, data center agility and innovation. So let's look at some of the new requirements for the physical network. Modern data center networks now have to be both efficiency oriented uh, to operate smarter, faster, and limit costs, and, and effect, effectiveness oriented, where the, the network can defend itself against attacks, ensure application and service delivery, and, and also drive innovation for the business. When we look at what a software defined data center requires from the physical network, uh, the network underlay, it's all about supporting the velocity of the data center. So what's needed is a network that's able to operate at the speed of VMs, specifically a network underlay that can keep pace across all of VMware solutions by integrating across all of its SDDC solutions and enabling or dynamically interacting with each to provide network automation and visibility and the tools to quickly identify and troubleshoot issues. And this is where Big Cloud Fabric comes in. So Big Switch Networks effectively offers a new way to build and operate networks that, that really improves availability and agility compared to traditional legacy approaches. Big Cloud Fabric, which again, as mentioned earlier, we refer to as a next generation switching architecture is, is resilient, automated, um, it, it's a zero touch fabric that treats every physical switch as part of a single logical switch, all managed through an SDN based controller. By centralizing the control and management planes and abstracting these discrete switches into a single logical switch operating as a fabric, the basic operations of the network get dramatically simplified. And automating data, data center specific workflows on top um, becomes much more simpler. So taking a look at Big Cloud Fabric, it's an SDN based least fine cloth fabric. Uh, it provides layer two switching, layer three routing, layer four through seven service insertion and chaining. Um, it basically provides a physical, a physical network that is simple to deploy and operate. It enables faster roller, rollout, scale out, troubleshooting, and, and also eliminates hardware vendor lock-in because it deploys on open hardware uh, uh, servers, uh, excuse me, switches. For VMware deployments, the, the integrated visibility Big Cloud Fabric provides for both network and virtualization admins enables rapid resolution of cross-domain issues. So again, you know, the Big Cloud Fabric leverages open networking hardware offered by uh, vendors such as Dell EMC, HP, or Acton, and provides the network operating system to create and manage a highly resilient scale-out network. So before we move on, just, just want to uh, make a note about intent-based networking, which was a theme that we covered a couple weeks ago in, in our last webinar. Um, and just to kind of reiterate some of the, the high-level points from, uh, from that presentation, you know, we really think about Big Cloud Fabric as an intent-based networking solution. So it really represents a paradigm shift away from the complex box-by-box -box, uh, networking model to you know, an intent-based approach that's inherently software driven and improves availability and agility compared to traditional solutions. And when we, when we say intent-based networking, what we're focused on is, is the what versus the how. So the key aspect of an intent-based system involves obscuring some of the complexity of implementation um, and, and assurance. And this allows users to simply specify a high level intention. For example, um, adding a VM or adding a switch. With an SDN-based model like we have with Big Cloud Fabric, uh, where the control and management planes are abstracted, it's much more straightforward to enable an intent-based approach to networking. So we're gonna take a quick look at all of the deployment options that we have with Big Cloud Fabric. So, uh, you know, we, we, you can deploy Big Cloud Fabric in the first case, Okay, so in, in use case number one that we have here can be deployed alongside VMware solutions such as VMware's NSX and vSAN uh, and, uh, and vSphere. And this is what we're going to focus on today, but just wanted to touch on some of the other deployment options available. So it can be used without an overlay uh, where you might be deploying it alongside OpenStack or container orchestrators such as Kubernetes. 
uh, or Red Hat, um, and, or it can be deployed uh, as a, a standalone networking solution without integration into a third-party orchestrator or other solution. But again, we're just going to focus on the first uh, deployment option that we see here. So here we're showing a high-level overview of our controller integration with VMware SCDC solutions. Big Cloud Fabric uh, provides network automation and deep visibility for vSphere, NSX, vSAN, uh, Horizon VDI, and other uh, VMware solutions. We also address the common gap in the data center between what the, the network admin can see and what the VM admin can see. So with traditional networking solutions, these users typically operate in information silos where the network team has visibility into the physical networking infrastructure, and the VM admins have visibility into the endpoints and activity of the virtual environment or logical network overlay. And we provide network automation and deep visibility for both, uh, both teams, both the network and the system admins, so they can each clearly see into, into the other domain if they choose to, so they can both, uh, both of them better identify and troubleshoot issues. So the first BCF and VMware solution we're going to cover is vSphere. In the top left of the screen, we can see a Big Cloud Fabric architecture. And the important things to note in this diagram are, one, the BCF controller has a VMware-specific module. Uh, that provides a convenient management point for VMware workloads. This is where network admins could view information that's been pulled from vCenter via, via its APIs. And two, we can see in vCenter itself, uh, there's a BCF plugin available to provide VM admins visibility into the BCF network fabric. Some organizations have uh, you know, really fully embraced the spirit of SDDC, and, and they may already have a converged team that manages both the network and VM environment. And for them, the solution is great because it, it really gives them a set of tools to view and troubleshoot across uh, both the virtual and physical domains. Um, for most organizations, the network and VM admin team still operate independently. And finding and troubleshooting issues can be time consuming. So for them, the integration we provide for both teams is, is especially useful. So um, now that we've covered what the integration looks like, we're going to talk about fabric automation. So when we say fabric automation or, or use the term automation, we're not talking about scripts or templates. Uh, this is ready-to-go automation. So once the integration is set up, BCF will automatically detect a host and form a lag or mlag. It also fully supports vMotion by automatically reprovisioning the network for the VM. This automation eliminates a lot of the traditional mundane uh, tasks associated with provisioning the network and, and other um, uh, workflows such as migrating network policies for vMotion. So basically, fabric automation greatly simplifies physical network provisioning for virtual workloads. And once you have automation in place, the next critical need is visibility. So it's, uh, it's important that each team has a common framework to view across the physical and virtual environment. With BCF, we take care of visibility for both. So for the network team in BCF, either through our GUI or CLI, BCF provides VM-level visibility. And, and network admins can do VM-to-VM -VM path tracing and view both the logical and physical connectivity of the two endpoints. For the VM admin team, again, they have access to the same information in the vCenter console, which gives them a, a unified uh, view of the network. So we're going to look at uh, what VM to VM path tracing looks like uh, in each console in, in the next couple of slides. So taking a look first at the network admin view, uh, we're looking at some close-ups of the test path capability in, in Big Cloud Fabric, um, specifically the, the GUI. So test path enables visibility and testing of the connectivity of the connection between virtual infrastructure endpoints. So once the network admin has selected the source and destination VMs, Big Cloud Fabric will perform a ping test and then display the hop-by-hop -hop connections through the fabric. This not only for the physical network, but also the logical path as well. 
in the vCenter console with, the, with our BCF plugin, the VM admins can get that exact same information and they can perform the same endpoint to endpoint troubleshooting as the network admin using their own interface. So they not only have a view of the virtual infrastructure, they now have visibility into the physical network. Another useful part of BCF's integration in, into vCenter is in the Fabric Analytics module of BCF. There is a dedicated dashboard for VMware events. These are events that have been pulled in from vSphere, vSAN, and NSX. So for instance, uh, an event could be vMotion or a change in configuration. This provides visibility to the network admin so they have a richer set of information when they need to source and fix issues. Again, this, this really just comes down to providing consistent visibility for network and VM admins. So uh, now that we've uh, taken a brief look at what vSphere, uh, the vSphere integration looks like, we're gonna get an actual demo of this with, uh, with JP. So take it away. Perfect, thank you, Angelique. So in this demo, I'll demonstrate capabilities of Big Cloud Fabric plugin for VMware vCenter. Plugin enhances Big Cloud Fabric integration with VMware vSphere and helps further simplify troubleshooting and provisioning of virtual workload. Of course, all this configuration can be done on Big Cloud Fabric controller, leveraging GUI, CLI, or REST API. Today, we'll perform these configuration using Big Cloud Fabric plugin for vCenter to highlight how easy it is for VM admins to take advantage and improve their operational workload. Goal of this uh, Big Cloud Fabric plugin for vCenter is to provide new troubleshooting tool for VM admin for faster problem resolution and unprecedented visibility into physical network. The following demonstration will show the plugin in action. So let's start with the installation of this plugin. It's very easy to install this plugin in vCenter. One can leverage CLI or GUI. Here I'm showing example of GUI all you need is username and password for vCenter for this installation. Once this installation is complete, you will see the Big Cloud Fabric uh, information on the integration page. And on the right hand side for that particular vCenter, uh, as I'm showing here, you will see the version of Big Cloud Fabric plugin. Also on the vSphere uh, vCenter, you will see an icon that shows Big Cloud Fabric. Once you click this icon, uh, it will show Big Cloud Fabric PAR, and you will see useful information on that particular part, part in terms of IP address, in terms of uh, the information of the PAR itself, controller information, and the vCenter. Like here, I'm associating two vCenters, vCenter, BCF vCenter 1 and BCF vCenter 2 to this particular part. If we click on one of these paths, we can get more information of, of the particular part. So let's look into vCenter 1. Here, you see that vCenter 1 has, uh, sorry, pod 1 has two vCenter tenants, uh, BCF vCenter 1 tenant and BCF vCenter 2 tenant. And then on right hand side, we provide all the necessary information related to this tenant in terms of logical network, uh, logical segment uh, and other details. Let's look at the tenant uh, information in terms of segment. So here on the center of the page, I'm showing all the segments available on this particular vCenter. Also, if, if you have a right uh, RBAC set, we provide all the necessary information in terms of what configuration can be managed through this vCenter plugin. That does not mean that any, any admin can do any configuration, whether it's a layer two or layer three. It's, it's very organized, well-defined roles that allow certain configuration to be taken place from the GUI plugin. So here I'm showing a particular logical segment wherein the VM admin places the IP address, a layer three gateway uh, for a particular segment that is BCF vCenter 1-19. And using this gateway, uh, 
node can communicate or workloads can communicate outside the network. Now let's look into the se segment. We can do a search on a segment. I'm showing a compute segment on the right hand side. It's very easy to search these and it will pop up wherever there is a match. And this match could be on any of the fields. So you are not restricted to a particular type of uh, field for searching. Here the information that is shown is for this particular segment and I can go into more detail of a VM for that particular uh, segment. So this box shows all the endpoints, all the VMs that are part of the segment. I can do search, uh, let's say uh, if I do a search on a node uh, uh, with, for Ubuntu, it shows me Ubuntu keyword that pops up anywhere, whether it's part of description, it's part of a name, or any part on any of these fields. This box displays the interface group membership for this particular host. It gives you information of a group, port group, that is associated with an interface group that is connected to a particular switch, a particular interface on the switch, and all the other details. Uh, using LLDP or CDP or whatnot. Now let's look into fabric topology. In fabric topology view, we can select a particular line to a, a for a particular virtual switch on a specific host to see how this virtual switch port group are connected to a physical fabric. Now here, if there is a disconnection, like for example, VMNIC 5 is not connected to Ethernet 3 on R1 L2, it's very obvious and very easily uh, identified in terms of problem that needs to be fixed. So we have seen a lot of useful information, but what if we have to troubleshoot? There is a problem between VM to VM communication and we don't know where to start. That's the reason why Big Cloud Fabric has built test path functionality into this plugin. It helps us provide easy troubleshooting for hub by hub. I have predefined the test path for vSAN, like 10.10.1.103 for a particular host and a source IP of 2.11 and destination IP of 2.12. For this particular demo, I'll create a new uh, test path uh, rule. And here, I'll define a source. By selecting a particular IP address, I can do a partial search, select on a particular machine, VM, and then use that as a source. I can do the same thing for a destination, uh, do a partial search, this time I'll do on a name, host name, uh, and then use that, select that, as a destination IP. As you can see, I can do these searches, this source and destination, either by using uh, virtual machine uh, or virtual and virtual name, or I can use ESXi host and uh, VM kernel adapter. On the right hand side, I have two options, a simulate and rest. Simulate is an option that provides the information from the controller per se, that this controller will allow this communication to take place between these two VMs. And this is where we go through a controller logic to say, okay, uh, for this particular communication to happen, uh, what what is the controller view? How does it expect this communication to flow from a host to a leaf, in this case R3, to a spine, to R1, and to end uh, host? Now note that here I'm not showing any physical interfaces as such. All information that you see is from controller point of view in terms of whether there is an ACL that is blocking. If there is, then you will not see this path completed. If there is any next hop entry that is hit, you will see all of those information here. Now to look into a specific uh, physical path, we have another command called test. This test relies on actual traffic. And here I'm sending a background traffic, ping traffic. And this, this test, once it is completed, it shows that yes, there is a success. The 
catch here is this test relies on the actual traffic and we have a filter on each and every switch. As soon as this traffic hits these switches, using this filter, we get to know what information or what traffic is coming in related to what particular information. And we can show actual interface, ingress and egress interface based on hardware hashing algorithm. And here, as you can see, the test is successful, VM to VM traffic path is complete, and you see from host, it is connected on Ethernet 1 to RAC 3 leaf 1 switch. From there, it's going out on Ethernet 49 uh, to Ethernet 49 on the spine, Ethernet 3 to Ethernet 49 between spine and uh, leaf 2, RAC 1 leaf 2, and from there, it is going to end host. So complete information, complete visibility is available for a VM admin to drive this particular type of troubleshooting in terms of uh, any, any connectivity, whether it's a VM to VM or VM to physical host, right from this uh, vCenter using Big Cloud Fabric plugin. So overall, a quick, quick uh, recap. Uh, we have seen that Big Cloud Fabric plugin for VMware vCenter enhances Big Cloud Fabric integration and provides VM admin capability in terms of simplified provisioning, visibility, and troubleshooting. This also brings in efficiency for entire organization. This is one example of intent-based networking, wherein uh, one need not worry about how. All you do is state what you want, and the rest of the function happens under the hood. Anjali? Thanks, JP. All right, so uh, we're going to next get into BCF's integration with uh, NSX. So uh, moving along, the, the first thing to notice about NSX and, and Big Cloud Fabric is that they share the same logical model. So you can see this diagram here. You know, NSX is a, is a logical, uh, is basically an, an overlay solution that operates as one logical switch with an SCN controller. And BCF is an underlay solution that operates as a single logical physical switch also with an SDN controller. So understanding that they operate in a similar way at a high level um, may be useful and also make clear that they are synergistic. You know, they're complementary solutions and they can be used in parallel. And, and because they leverage, uh, uh, you know, effectively use a similar architecture, they work especially well together from an integration standpoint. So by tightly integrating these two solutions, the physical fabric can be automated and network admins can get, get a, a better view of what's going on on the NSX side so they can monitor and, and troubleshoot issues. And, and finally, hardware VTEP functionality allows NSX to use the entire Big Cloud Fabric as one hardware VTEP with flexible connectivity options for virtualized and bare metal nodes. So here we can see NSX VTEP information as an endpoint on BCF. This is a view of a list of endpoints on, within the BCF GUI. Um, this information is also available through the BCF CLI. Again, this just comes down to providing transparency across the physical and virtual network. So here we're getting a view of the Fabric Analytics module on BCF. So in the events widget that you see on the bottom, we can see all the information about an event. And we also see the associated identifiers uh, from both the network and VM sides. So we can see the, the logical switch, the, the VXLAN ID, and the VM name. Associating identifiers from uh, the network and VM side provides a common language uh, between the overlay and the underlay. And this is really useful for communication and troubleshooting purposes. So whether you have a converged team that's managing both the overlay and the underlay, or you follow a more traditional model where the network and VM admins operate as separate teams, you know, they still can reap the benefits of this, this uh, cross-domain visibility. So with that, we're going to go back over to JP, and he's going to walk through a demo of, of our integration with NSX. Sure. Thanks, Angelic. Uh, so in this demo, I'll take uh, time to talk about the advantages of deploying Big Cloud Fabric as VMware NSX underlay. As a part of this demo, 
Uh, I'll also show the technical preview of our hardware VTEP functionality on VMware NSX. We'll see how NSX node connectivity and transport network are automated. Uh, they are provisioned in the underlay. We will review NSX hardware VTEP setup for Big Cloud Fabric and understand the advantages of uh, monitoring this entire network, troubleshooting options, as well as uh, all the necessary fabric analytics related details. So let's start with the uh, topology, what, what the setup is. On the left hand, we have a logical topology with NSX controller and vCenter connecting to Big Cloud Fabric controller, which is a single point of integration. NSX transport network has three NSX software VTAP and one Big Cloud Fabric hardware VTAP. Logical network in green color corresponds to NSX overlay with VMs behind different NSX VTAP nodes, as well as bare metal host behind Big Cloud Fabric hardware VTAP. On the right hand side, we will show that physical topology with a Big Cloud Fabric. And here I'm showing a spine leaf architecture. The setup I have has two spines and four leaves. We have three physical hosts connected for ESXi virtual workload and one bare metal host. We have deployed integration with the vCenter and let's look into how this looks like. So here on vCenter console, we have three SXI hosts. We are showing all the necessary information related to host configuration, your VM kernel interface IP and the segments. So as mentioned earlier, as soon as this integration is set up, we will start talking to these hosts will have all the links up by our integration. We will detect all of these things. And this is where I'm showing on Big Cloud Fabric console, uh, all the ESXi that are learned, the three ESXi hosts that are learned here. Uh, you can see these port groups are up, interface groups are up. Uh, they are using LLDP protocol. Uh, as I'm showing on the right hand side. If I go into more detail, I can see what physical port and where they are connected to. In, in this example, I have leaf 0B with Ethernet 25. It's connected to ESXi host, VMNIC2. And similarly on VMNIC3 for second switch. Once I go into a particular segment for that particular tenant, I can see all the detailed membership information, group membership information. Here I'm showing all the endpoints that are learned through this, uh, uh, this integration. And all the VMs, they are also learned as an endpoint. These are sitting behind this host. Let's look at the basic uh, configuration that we have for VXLAN termination. Here I'm showing all the necessary information for VXLAN. It's very simple setup that uh, all you need is define a VTAP and define a particular uh, uh, IP address and you are set. You don't need any fancy configuration. You can also see that remote VXLAN tunnel endpoints are not populated here. And the main reason is we have not enabled uh, the OVSDB on NSX to start this communication. So this is like a very basic setup uh, that we are just starting. So let's go to vCenter. Uh, before I go there, here I'm showing that I'm able to ping between two VMs. And if I try to ping between VM and a bare metal, I'm not able to reach. So let's enable uh, vCenter, uh, on vCenter, let's enable this NSX OVSDB integration so that this communication with the uh, VM and bare metal starts taking place. All right, here I have uh, already configured, I have got the information related to certificates. So all I need is define a name 
and insert the certificate information. Once I do this, uh, because of the configuration uh, point with the OVSDB and my integration, I'll start learning the information for this particular, uh, let's say, let's take an example of log this logical switch with uh, 1,000, sorry, 10,000 uh, switch ID. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a bare metal into this particular uh, segment and enabling a VLAN. In a way, I'm mapping uh, 10,000 VNI ID with a VLAN 25. As soon as I do that, I can you can see that I am able to ping between bare metal and uh, VMs. All right, so now as we can see that uh, this remote tunnel endpoint that was not populated earlier is now populated. So communication from NSX controller to Big Cloud Fabric controller is happening. If you see in the bottom of the screen, I am showing all the remote endpoints as well. These are again dynamically learned. Let's look at a test path. Earlier we did test path using uh, Big Cloud Fabric uh, plugin for vCenter. Here we will do test path directly on the Big Cloud Fabric controller. A very similar concept, you pick a particular source that you want to check communication and a particular destination, and then you enable simulate. Very similar to what I've shown in plugin, uh, simulate is an option, it's more of a controller view that controller shows from controller logic per se, how this communication should go through. So in this case, it's very simple. You have a source and a destination uh, talking to VXLAN endpoint, uh, that is VTAP. Uh, however, if you look at the physical part of this uh, particular uh, communication, you will see that this is happening between an endpoint and a VTAP. Going through rack one, spine, and rack zero, all the way to VTAP. I can also do a actual test with a traffic and here I am showing on the right hand side, this test with the traffic indicates the traffic flows from Ethernet 23 to leaf 1A to Ethernet 51, connected to Ethernet 3, goes to spine zero, so on and so forth. And then on the right, rightmost side, I'm showing all the packet uh, TCAM counter that are going through uh, this particular flow. Switching to Big Cloud Fabric, uh, Fabric Analytics module. On the left-hand side, you see all the dashboards that we have created for VMware and other use cases. Let's click at all events. Here, I can go down and see all the necessary events that have taken place. I can click, I can drag specific uh, time on the top window, or I can go into specific vCenter. Let's click on a specific vCenter and a hypervisor here. And once you select, uh, all the necessary events will automatically be filtered at the bottom of the screen. All right, let's look at NSX particular, uh, NSX specific detail. Here I'm showing uh, this particular NSX with a logical switch and a VM name. Once I select a particular VM, I can go down uh, to see a specific information related to that particular VM a vCenter, a logical vSwitch, VNI mapping, remember we did, uh, we used 10,000 and v, VLAN 25. All of that information is shown on the analytics module. This helps troubleshoot all of this connectivity in the underlay, which was basically a trouble for any overlay type of deployment. So a quick uh, recap on this particular presentation. We have seen that by deploying Big Cloud Fabric for NSX underlay provides you benefit in terms of visibility and automation for NSX deployment. JP, as you transition, we had a couple questions that came in specific to the NSX piece. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and ask them. One is what certificates were imported when you added it to NSX in the demo? So these uh, you need for NSX hardware VTAP to communicate to a particular switch. You need a 
a particular certificate coming from NSX. Now, there are various options how you can do it. So in our case, uh, in the interest of time, what we did was we used a uh, certificate directly from this module and inserted in uh, in this demo here. Okay. So again, it depends on what type of deployment people are going through, and we can take it offline and provide more color to what we are doing. The second one is, um, so those endpoints are learned and coordinated with NSX regardless of regardless if they are local or remote. Um, for example, DCI L2 stretch, correct? That's right. Yes. So uh, NSX, uh, once you have a hardware VTAP, now you can connect to any uh, VM on the NSX environment to a bare metal which could be a local or remote or uh, remote VMs, it doesn't matter. It, it goes with a very standard construct of NSX. Great, and then if so, how is the flooding contained? Flooding is contained based on the configuration that you have done. Uh, in terms of uh, big cloud fabric, we have segments defined, and these are layer two uh, constructs, so uh, any flooding will happen within these segments. Of course, uh, you can have a layer two, layer three def definitions, and then across DCI, or across different parts, you can constrain using these layer two, layer three boundaries. Perfect, perfect, good. A lot goes with the design of uh, uh, what people have chosen to go with, and we can help uh, put help uh, provide uh, how it should go about, how one should go about these uh, designs. We are not adding any new concept, new construct here. We are leveraging what uh, VMware has defined for NSX, and we are simply using that information to attach a VNI to a particular segment, and that is it. No, no, not very fancy out here. The biggest fa or fancy part is under the hood automation, the intent that we are taking care of it under the hood, uh, using simplicity provided by SDN concept and SDN controller. Great. All right. So in the interest of time, we're going to move on to uh, the next section, which is vSAN. So uh, this is another significant area of integration uh, between VCF and, and VMware. So again, looking at this diagram here, we can, we can draw some parallels between vSAN, uh, which is a software-defined storage solution, and Big Cloud Fabric, which is a software-defined physical networking solution. Both of these solutions treat the infrastructure as a single logical entity. So in the case of vSAN, the storage, which may be hyperconverged infrastructure, is treated as a single logical data store. And in the case of Big Cloud Fabric, the physical network uh, is treated as a single logical switch. And, and there are obvious benefits like agility and flexibility uh, to this abstraction for both solutions. And they, they can be especially complementary if you want to reap those benefits for both storage and physical networking. So the, the BCF integration with vSAN works very similar to the vSphere and NSX integration. The fabric can be automated for vSAN nodes and clusters. In particular, BCF's one-click multicast uh, can really cut down the, the typically multi-step process uh, into a simple swipe right workflow. And for troubleshooting, the test path functionality that we looked at earlier, along with Big Cloud Fabric's uh, Fabric Analytics module, can be uh, very helpful. So um, the BCF integration with vSAN is, is pretty simple. It's really a three-step process. So first, you, you just register with vCenter on Big Cloud Fabric. And then within Big Cloud Fabric, you just enable multicast. And this is literally just moving a slider from disabled to enabled. So very simple. And then in vCenter, just deploy vSAN on the cluster. And that's really it. Uh, the network will, will automatically be provisioned for the cluster. So vSAN nodes uh, will, uh, once it's connected, automatically be visible and easily identifiable in BCF as endpoints, as, as we can see here. Event information related to vSAN hosts and clusters is available in Big Cloud Fabric's Fabric Analytics module, and you can drill down into detail or filter by a particular date or time interval. 
So here we can see more detailed information. We can see uh, a breakdown of events based on vCenter, cluster, or node. So now it's uh, time to get back to uh, our demo. So JP, thanks again. Sure. So uh, let's look into uh, vSend demo. Very similar to earlier two use cases, here we'll highlight how we can uh, auto-attach vSend nodes to the fabric, as well as how this uh, transport layer is auto-configured for vSend networking. We'll also demonstrate uh, to see how we can take uh, advantage of touch path uh, in vSAN environment. So let's uh, jump right into this uh, demo. What we'll do is we'll start with the uh, vCenter and see our vCenter cluster in uh, vSAN. So on the left hand side, I'm showing uh, three compute that I'm leveraging for uh, vSAN. And on the right hand side, I'm showing the information related to this particular compute. Now here, we are using, uh, or rather I'm showing uh, vSAN health that is available on vCenter already. So it shows everything is good, it's all healthy, network point, uh, point of view, it's all, all good. Now let's go into more detail to see how Big Cloud Fabric sees this information using our uh, Big Cloud Fabric plugin. Okay, so, Going into integration, again, very quick, we are using vCenter 1, going into interface group, very quickly, we can see that all these are learned automatically using LLDP, uh, using uh, for all of these hosts. And then uh, we can go into segments to see, uh, we have automatically created this particular segment corresponding to uh, VM kernel networking for vSAN. And then if we look at the endpoint view, here all of these endpoints are learned automatically for your vSAN communication. Let's go back to Big Cloud Fabric plugin for VMware vCenter. And here you can see that GUI provides visibility into physical fabric for vSAN, very similar to what we have seen earlier for vSphere and NSX. And then we can do test path, very similar to NSX and vSphere use case. So all of this helps you uh, very quickly identify the problem that may happen in a vSAN environment. We have uh, single touch uh, uh, multicast enable for vSAN environment. So uh, that also can be troubleshoot using vSAN. So let's, let's create a test path. Uh, for this particular VM kernel interface. Here, as you can see, I want to leverage the VM kernel port and a host IP address. So that's what I will type this time uh, and not the VM interface in, uh, or VM IP address. Uh, uh, so on destination side, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, VM K2. So as you can see, uh, earlier demo I showed you on VM machine uh, and uh, VNIC IP addresses. Here I'm using ESXi host with VM kernel adapter. And source IP and destination IP are all based on, uh, as I'm showing here, uh, for the host. Uh, very quick on the simulate, uh, which is more of a controller view, uh, provides you information. Let's scroll down. Okay, provides you information on the Controller point of view, what is the logical path? Uh, connected to a leaf and spine switches. Again, no interface information because that's actual, uh, uh, that we get information when we run the traffic. So let's do a test here. So we get the actual path with the traffic. All right, uh, traffic is going fine. So let we'll capture this information. Okay, it's successful. And now we can see actual physical path for vSAN environment as well. It's no different uh, than what we have shown for NSX. I wanted to highlight that, hey, even for vSAN environment, same thing can be achieved. All right, so this is successful. So let's go into 
next part of the presentation. So before I go, I want to highlight that even for vSAN environment, it's very simple and easy. Uh, one click multicast to enable for entire fabric. And that is what vSAN can leverage for vSAN deployment. All the necessary transport layer is plumbed automatically for vSAN environment. With that, let's go to Angelique. Thanks. Uh, so before we move on, do we want to take any questions or are we running, how are we doing for time? Um, we are, we're tied on time, 10.53, we stop at the top of the hour. There is one more question. Um, I think as we finish up, maybe we'll save it for the Q&A window and then invite others. If there are other questions, please send them in on the question box. Great. Okay. So the last section that we're going to cover today is uh, based around our integration with the Realize login site. So just to quickly go through this, um, you know, VCF has a Re v Realize login site plugin that extends the visibility of the VM admin into the physical network. So a theme that we've touched on again and again throughout this presentation and in the demo is the need to eliminate visibility silos and, and really provide a consistent view to both network and VM admins so they can uh, very rapidly see and troubleshoot issues. And BCF's vRealize login site plugin provides uh, yet another point of visibility uh, by exporting events, uh, statistics, errors, and changes to vRealize. Admins can monitor one or multiple BCF fabrics through a single centralized view. It also comes with predefined dashboards and alerts. An advantage uh, of installing the BCF content pack on, on vRealize is that you can then correlate BCF logs with other content packs. So for instance, here we can see it correlated with the vSAN uh, content pack. So just to wrap up uh, and summarize, BigCloud Fabric provides comprehensive support for vSphere, NSX overlay, vSAN, and vRealize login site. And, and there are several other VMware solutions that we also support and didn't have time to cover today. These include uh, Horizon VDI and VIO and VMware's container uh, solution, um, but you can learn more about this on our website. Uh, so just coming back to the solutions covered in today's presentation, really the key advantages to using Big Cloud Fabric for your virtualized infrastructure and network overlay is the deep integration between BCF and VMware, which enables the, the fabric automation, the cross-domain visibility and, and the troubleshooting tools that are so critical to deploying and maintaining an agile data center. And, and, and BCF's intent-based approach to networking is also really key here because it enables data center agility um, because you can basically eliminate the mundane operations and unnecessary complexity. Um, so that allows the IT organization to operate faster and, and more efficiently. So with that, I think we're going to close out and, and move on to Q&A. Great. So thank you both. I think the demos were great. We've had tremendous um, engagement with the audience. So thanks to all of you who are with us and uh, continue to be interested in the topic. We have one kind of big question, um, I think, related. Can you explain how Big Switch technology might help in defending against a larger ransomware attack a la Sony Pictures? Um, I know there would need to be complementary technologies, and you've already gone through uh, native segmentation, but interested in your thoughts on this. Absolutely. So uh, this, is, uh, this is definitely a very big topic, and uh, what I want to highlight is on bigswitch.com, we have a Big Cloud Fabric uh, white paper that talks about security provided by Big Cloud Fabric. I want to highlight key points here. One is the Big Cloud Fabric controller is not in the data path. So from control plane point of view, uh, it's fairly secure. It's, it's uh, out of band connectivity to these switches. So it's not in line. Plus we provide a lot of additional security options so I would highly encourage you to look at that particular white paper. And if there are more information, we can talk. And as you know, this is a very broad topic. We cannot cover it in a few minutes here in this webinar. Perfect. Thank you, JP. Thank you, Angelique. We are running short on time. We're almost at the top of the hour. Um, 
as a reminder, um, we've had the Q&A box open. We appreciate all the insights. If you have additional questions as we close out, please send them to us at info.bigswitch.com. Um, if uh, uh, you have something here that we've picked your interest, again, info.bigswitch.com. And our webinar is going to be available on our website site under the webinar archive, so you can uh, go there for an on-demand replay. It's pretty easy to get started with our technologies and solutions. There's several options, including our labs. We have more than 6,500 folks in that community today, and you're uh, welcome to get access at any time and um, start looking at all of the modules that are available there, in addition to our free community edition. Um, our, our labs, as you can see, there are BCF and BMF modules. Uh, specifically covering VMware, OpenStack, and all the use cases that we have available. Um, you can experience our networks, our bare metal SCN solutions firsthand from the comfort of your PC. And it's really your own sandbox to trial uh, various uh, uh, scenarios that you might have running in your, in your operations, in your network. Uh, as we move forward, uh, we are um, uh, looking forward to our next uh, webinar, which is VMware SCDC Network Visibility and Automation with the BCF vSphere plugin. That's Wednesday, August 23rd at 10 a.m., our usual time. Um, just prior to VMworld, the following week in Vegas in Mandalay Bay from the 27th to the 31st, we'll be in booth 808. We invite all of you to visit. Um, and as always, register for our webinars at www.bigswitch.com slash webinars. We appreciate your time today and um, thank you so much. Have a great day, afternoon, and evening.